good morning everybody lovely to greet you here this morning as we meet together for worship today and those of you who are coming into God's house you will come with whatever this week has held for you I don't doubt it was on Thursday lunchtime Thursday afternoon this week that uh, sister Joyce Ellsmore was taken home to heaven promoted to glory and uh, we, we give thanks for her life and her ministry and her, all that she meant to us all. And we'll be dearly missed by, by Chris. I'd love to see you this morning, Chris. Um, but for you and your extended family as well at this time. And uh, obviously, as details are made known about other plans, then we will communicate that as best we are able. But uh, please be assured that uh, you are in our prayers and we give thanks, as I say, for the life of Joyce Ellsmore, who went to her heavenly reward on Thursday this week. I'm going to hand over now as the Corps Sergeant Major Andy brings to us this week's announcements. It's good morning from me. Now, just some bits of news. We congratulate Casper this week on good A-level results, which saw him secure his place at Cardiff University. Um, there's a number of social things coming along. Next Saturday, the 26th, there is a cycle ride being planned in the Forest of Dean, uh, the cycle centre at Canop. If you'd like to come along to that, it starts at 10 o'clock. Have a chat with... Simon's not here. Have a chat with me sometime today, and I can sort you out any more detail. Also, next Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, there is a core picnic at Robinswood Hill where we have uh, time to join together for food and games. Um, bring your own chair and food is the note. Uh, so that's 3 o'clock at Robinswood Hill. And also a few things in the bulletin looking ahead, a divisional celebration on 10th of September and the welcome to the general on the 3rd in the afternoon there. So keep an eye on the bulletin for any other things we're going to do and are going on wider than this place. We'll pass over to James. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. And uh, there was a, a little bit of a conversation in one of the um, groups this week about how long the meeting would take. And the band are going to play quite quickly. For those of you who want to be out by 11 o'clock or 5-2. Um, but yeah, well, but welcome to worship as we gather on this um, on this Sunday morning, um, the band have played our opening tune. We're going to be quite, um, we're going to think about the sea this morning and also stepping out and this kind of place that we often find ourselves between faith and doubt and how the two, well one, I say feed off each other, they don't feed off each other, but how one can overcome the other. Um, but first of all, we're going to sing song 450. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, will the storms, the tides lift and the, and the cables strive? Will your anchor hold, sorry, will your anchor drift or firm remain? Let's stand and we'll sing these verses through. Thanks. <laughs>
please take your seats. I wonder, young people, would you like to come and help me with this uh, little experiment? So this morning we're going to think about uh, two people, one called Peter and one called Jesus. So the Bible reading we're going to look at later is that Peter is in a boat. And Jesus walks on the water and asks Peter to get out of the boat and to walk on the water. So, what we're going to do this morning is we're going to try and make these paper clips float. So it's just ordinary water out the tap. To try and will they float? Can we put one in? No, that wasn't very good. Does someone have to do it again? This isn't going to plan, is it? Let's try again. Oh, nearly, but not quite. Do you want to give it a go? Hmm. How are they supposed to float? You see, sometimes, well, in life, we need somebody to support us. We just sang about a song that will our anchor hold. So who's going to help us? Who's going to guide us? So can I ask you to hold that for a second? So if we take this bent paper clip and it kind of signifies Jesus, who holds us as we step out onto the water. We don't sink. So we, as Peter stepped out on the boat, uh, Jesus said, just keep looking at me and I'll point you in the right direction. But as Peter got out of the boat, he then thought, oh, this doesn't make sense because, well, any of you walk on water? No? No? So, so like our worries, things that concern us, things that come around, um, it's a bit like this, wash it up a bit, so if we can pour that in there. straight to the bottom. You see? Now the flaw in this illustration is that we then can't pick them up and put them back on because adding uh, washing up liquid changes the, the chemical um, stuff of the water. But it kind of picks us up and puts us back on the, on, on the top so we can walk. So we're going to say, think about that this morning, that as we're invited to step out, to have faith in who Jesus is and to do what Jesus asked us to do, that even when we get worried, when we get concerned, when we kind of like, really kind of like, this does not make sense. Um, and maybe we're feeling as though we're sinking because Peter kind of took his eyes from Jesus and he said, Jesus save me. And Jesus put out his hand and puts him back um, on the water. Hopefully that'll help us a bit later on. Thanks very much for your help this morning. I'm going to take a seat. All of us in our faith journey, I'm sure, have had times of of great faith where we've stepped down in faith and then things of doubt have come along and maybe just we're starting to feel a bit as though we're sinking. You know, the washing up liquids kind of come around and we're kind of like feeling a bit overwhelmed, we sink. But actually the invitation that we're going to think about this morning is that Jesus just places out his hand and all we need to do is, you know, call on him. We're going to listen to the band now, please, as they bring to us their, their piece called All For Thee.
when we think about those words about being all for thee, that's easy, isn't it? On the days where the sun is shining and we're feeling as though we're walking on the water, our eyes are fixed on Jesus. But in the days where it's not so easy, when there is doubt, when there is other factors, the storms of life that come along, it's not always as easy to sing those words. Thank you, band, uh, for your ministry this morning. As we pray, uh, we're going to think about those things this morning. And just in the, the sense that um, we all come with our life experience this morning. And for some of us, we're on this very plateau, even water, a bit like that bowl of water we looked at earlier, um, and we're on the top of the water and everything's fine. Maybe for others of us, we're feeling like we're in a raging storm. But actually this morning we've got this invitation to come and to be still. We're going to sing the song that says, Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Song 353. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Let's sing these verses as we uh, come into this time of prayer. Thank you. In that third and last verse we just sang, the power of the Lord is moving in this place, not only in this place, but in the places of our own hearts and our own minds. He comes to cleanse and to heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him. However we feel that the storms of life are, however big we feel they are, they're, they're not too hard for him to journey with us in, to support us, to hold us, um, on the top of the water. So in faith, receive from him. 
Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. As we come and we gather this morning, we're mindful that we do so, so freely. And only in these last few days we've heard of people, brothers and sisters, uh, Christian brothers and sisters around the world, where um, in Pakistan, you know, about 20 church buildings have been attacked and hundreds of Christians have been, homes have been destroyed by extremists. 21 people have been killed by militants in Nigeria. They're kind of, um, as we look kind of internationally, when we think about the storms that maybe that we're experiencing in our, in our own lives, those that um, have lost loved ones, those who grieve loved ones. And we particularly think of Chris this morning. But the power of God is at work. He comes to walk with us, to cleanse and to heal. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this time we have of coming before you. This time set apart in our week to come and to yeah, bring all our cares and our worries uh, before you, but also recognising that you're bigger than our, our fears and our cares and our worries, and you delight in being able to walk with us in those times. So, Father, may we, um, as we're going to look at later, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And when the storms of life come, and maybe we're feeling as though we're sinking a little, or maybe a lot, um, we all just say, Lord, save me. We put out our hands. And Jesus places out his hand in readiness to receive us. Well, we particularly want to um, remember Chris this morning and just pray your peace and your blessing upon him in these days. And for the wider family, Lord, as they mourn the loss of their loved one, um, of wife and as, as family. Lord, just be unto them all that they need. In those moments of questioning, and in those moments of doubt, in those moments of... Um, sharing fond memories. Well, may you just, may they sense your, your presence close with them. Lord, for, for each person that's either been or is at summer camp, well, we know these are important uh, events in the life of many Christians. So Lord, we just pray that as people have returned, um, as people that are on camp, whether that's as students or as staff, that, Lord, you've um, just met with them in a special way and revealed something of more of your love and your grace and your acceptance um, for each of us. Lord, may that be a time where, yeah, faith is grown and that boldness of faith um, is harnessed. And Lord, as we gather for worship this morning, we all come, as I say, with all of our week's experience, all that we've uh, been and done. And Lord, we just come and we be still for the presence of your, of your Holy Spirit is here. And you choose to journey with each of us, and we thank you for that. So Lord, as this meeting continues, may we sense your Holy Spirit speaking to, into our lives and into our hearts, we pray. Amen. And amen. Nathan's going to come and to share. Um, Nathan's been away um, a couple weeks ago at Falcon Camp, which is a, a children's camp run by CPAS. And I've asked Nathan to come and just share a couple of highlights of his time just there. Thank you. Okay, so a couple of highlights. Um, so first day, we were uh, setting up all the uh, outside stuff uh, setting up the uh, outdoor uh, uh, gazebo, I guess you could say. Uh, didn't have any uh, manual or anything like that because it got lost last year. Um, so made it pretty much from memory. Uh, just a few leftover bits, but we thought ah, it'll be fine. 
is, is, is big enough, we don't need it. Uh, next day, when the rain came down, uh, it collapsed under its own weight of the, of the roof. So it was like, ah, ah, well, never mind, it's fine. It's not all there, but it's, it's fine. Um, so that, that was a fun, that was a fun day. Um, another highlight was just how all the young people got on with each other. It was a very good week and just how they all uh, uh, encourage each other through all the different uh, high rope activities and the other things we were doing that week. Um, yes, um, another highlight was when we went out to the uh, theme park. Uh, obviously that all the big rides, kids love them. Uh, adults not so much, but um, yeah, no, it's a good, it's a good day out. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's all all that I can think of. Is that okay? Yeah. So, is there anything you particularly learnt um, in your week on the uh, Falcon Camp? Um, just learnt that how different people react to different situations. Mm. Uh, just do people just get on with it, or do people stumble a bit along the way? Um, and just how you can encourage those that stumble to get through the situation that they're in. Cool. So how can we as a congregation pray for you? Um, um, just pray for more uh, uh, opportunities to do these camps mm -hmm. and that more young people can attend them and just have a fun week off. Well, thanks, Nathan. Let's pray for you before you go back to your seat, if that's okay. Father, we thank you for Nathan and his willingness to serve you at Falcon Camp, for his experiences of working with each of those young people, for the impact of which he will have had on the lives of each of those young people, where he's encouraged um, yeah, young people to walk on the water, to get out of the boat uh, and to walk on water. Lord, we thank you that all that he does here are part of this um, core community, this core family. And Lord, we just ask that you'll continue to bless him and use him in mighty ways beyond our own understanding and thinking, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nathan. Some of our young, younger people went to junior camp So when, last week. Um, so if you went to junior camp, can you wave at me? Yes. So can you think of, oh, we're quite well spread around, that's good. Can you think of a highlight, something that was good, and your favourite meal? For, I mean, let's get the important stuff out of the way first. Okay, so was there a favourite meal that you had? And what was the best bit of the week? Shall I, um... It's safe, I think. <laughs> We're talking about faith and doubt, aren't we? We've got faith in the chair, we hope. Okay, so, um, what was your favourite bit of the week? The disco. So was that, could you hear the music or was it a silent disco? Silent disco. A silent disco. So everybody know what a silent disco is? Yeah? You've got headphones on. Everybody's got different headphones on. You've got three channels. So if you don't like the music on number one, you move to channel two. It's a bit like radio one, radio two. You know, um, you don't go quite as far as radio four. But, um, but yeah, so everything you can choose. Um, so that was good, yeah. So what was your favorite meal? I liked everything. You like everything? Good. Is there one particular one that you... No, they're all equally as good. They're good. Hey, that's good stuff, isn't it? There was somebody at the back here. Let's run to the back. Yeah. Can I squeeze in there? Is that okay? Oh, geez, thank you. So what's your name? Aiden. Aiden. Good to see you, Aiden. Did you enjoy your summer camp? Yeah. What was your favourite bit? The Nerf War. Nerf War? Mm. So what's the Nerf War? You have Nerf guns and you have to try and hit each other. Very good. Um, I think Nerf pellets are, are foam, so that it doesn't, shouldn't hurt too much um, if um, you're not too close. If you don't hit them in the eye. I got hit in the eye. You got hit in the eye. Mm, dangerous. Um, so what was your favourite meal? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Mm, very good. Um, mustard or ketchup? Ketchup. Good, good. Let's go. There was somebody over here who was... Lovely, thank you. So what's your name? Scarlett. Scarlett. Good to see you, Scarlett. And what was your favourite bit of junior camp? Um, 
Swimming. Swimming, okay. So was that in a big swimming pool or in a little swimming pool? Big. Okay, good. And what was your favourite meal? The hot dog. The hot dogs, mm, very good. That seems to have been a hit. Um, Andy, do you want to share? Hello. <laughs> well, not... Sorry, I was just showing the photo of the camera. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, yeah. Feel free. Yeah, um, yeah your favourite bit of the week? Um, honestly, getting home on Thursday was nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> favourite bit? Um, no, it was so many good memories. Um, yeah, just seeing these, these children have so much fun. We had 34 children there. Um, just they got on really well. We all had such good times and many, many good memories. Um, particular highlight was in the final session, it was a superhero theme, so we're talking to the children about that, how they could be superheroes wherever they are and just seeing them respond to that and, and bring themselves as, uh, as an offering to God to be superheroes wherever they are. It's fantastic. Great. Thanks, Andy, for all your work and your preparation. Andy heads up the team, which I'm sure many of you know, and um, yeah, additional to your DHQ roles, so uh, thanks for that. Um, Favourite food? Uh, we had a barbecue one night, and that was, that was lovely. So. Cool. Good stuff. So it's just a, a quicker bit of insight into um, what some of our young people and Andy got up to last week at the Poplars as they worshipped together um, as we uh, yeah, did their thing. So um, we want to remember, keep our young people in prayer, not just those who went on junior camp, but obviously all of them. We're going to sing a song that says, When I was lost, you came and rescued me, reached down into the pit and lifted me. Oh Lord, such love. I was as far away as I could be. You know all the things I've ever done. But Jesus' blood has cancelled everyone. Oh Lord, su such grace to qualify me as your own. There is a new song in my mouth. There is a deep cry in my heart, a hymn of praise to Almighty God. Hallelujah. And now I stand firm on this rock. My life is sitting now in Christ, in God. The old is gone and the new has come. Hallelujah. Your love has lifted me. It's song 483 in the songbook. Let's stand and we'll sing these verses through. Thanks.
take your seats. And I've asked um, Elliot to come and share his experience of, of summer school this um, a fortnight ago. Um, so Elliot, thank you. I think the best bits about summer school were all the fun games and the silly activities we had, especially the climbing wall where I was the fastest up, <laughs> by quite a large margin really. I think the best, biggest thing I've learned is in worship it doesn't matter what you're doing, you could just do your normal stand there and sing or you could do something silly and actually God doesn't care what you do as long as you're worshipping him, even if you look silly to other humans. That God doesn't care how we come to worship or how we express our worship as long as we worship. Um, thanks for that, Elliot. Um, Elliot got, uh, I can't remember how high the climbing wall was, but from top to bottom, so sorry, from bottom to top rather, um, that way around. That was really special. Yeah, from, from um, um, <laughs> yeah. it took eight seconds to get to the top um, from, from cold start um, to the top. So, yeah. Other people, uh, the other next quick, quickest was probably around 10 seconds, wasn't it? So he'd shaved two seconds off. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for that, Elliot. And um, yeah, continue to pray for our, our young people. Hopefully, um, our Bible reading we're going to read together will appear on the screen. Yes, uh, we thank Luke for, for doing this for us. Um, um, so let's, uh, we, we're turning to Matthew. Um, chapter 14 verses 22 to 33 and uh, yeah where um, also Jesus just fed the 5,000 and um, getting over that and this is where we kind of pick it up at verse 22 so let's read together immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Hey, after he dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When everyone came, he was alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffered by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of this them, walking on the lake, the, when the disciples walked with him, walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But the, Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. I would be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and being pink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And then went down into the boat. The wind died down, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, this is the Son of God. Amen. We're going to look at that in a few moments, but the songsters are going to come uh, and sing the song still.
I wonder if we can just pop the, the slide up on that. Anybody know what that means? Sorry, say again. SOS, yeah? Okay. To so save our souls. Yeah? For some people, that's what it means. For others, it means it saves our ships. Um, but yeah, in this, um, it's a well kind of known um, phrase. But basically, we need help. Um, universal, as I say, quite, it's not defined, nobody quite knows what it means, um, because people, you know, the second S means different things, whether it's souls or ship, to different people, depending on, um, I suppose, what vessel you're on, um, but also kind of uh, where you come from. But as I say, whichever um, it means, um, however you interpret it, it kind of means that we need help and we need it as soon as possible. Um, I hope that we never need to use a, an SOS button or an SOS kind of cannon, you know. Um, I mean, even in some cars now, there's an SOS button that if you're in an accident and you can press it, it kind of sends messages to the relevant people. Again, I hope none of us ever have to press said, said button. But can we send an SOS to God? I think Peter calls out a bit of an SOS when he says, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and caught him as he was um, sinking. Even though Peter had um, endangered himself by getting out of the boat, you know, he took that decision and Jesus was still there for him when he, and when he allowed those doubts to, to come in and cloud him. And this quote I found that said, it doesn't matter where our troubles come from, whether that we are to blame or others, but God is not, con um, is not concerned with the responsibility or the guilt, he just wants us to be safe. And he will do whatever it takes to ensure that we are protected. You know, that loving kind of parent who actually says, I don't care what's done, let's just get you home. In the beginning, we read in Genesis that there was watery chaos on the earth and God created space for life by dividing the water and the land in Genesis 1, 6 and 7. Controlling water is an attribute of God. When Jesus walks on water and when he pulls Peter from the, the waves, he is doing what God did in Genesis, bringing order to the chaos. Following the feeding of the 5,000, which we read in the verses before um, the bit that we read this morning, Jesus chooses to be alone with God. It's easy to imagine that he needs a bit of space after feeding 5,000 people. Um, yeah, for those who are involved on a Monday, um, you don't quite feed 5,000 people, but, you know, having a bit of space after feeding a number of people on, on a Monday at community meals, I'm sure, is a welcome break. Um, well, times that by till you get to 5,000. Imagine that, that kind of chaos. And even Jesus takes time to reflect. Takes time, um, not just about the, the, the big stuff in life, but the day-to-day, -day, daily life events. On Thursday, uh, Jackie led devotions in, in band practice and encouraged us to think about three things that we were thankful for. And also three things that we would want to offer to, up to God that we feel challenged by. And this is quite similar to the Jesuit uh, monastic um, kind of daily prayer called Examine, where we're asked to, first of all, give thanks, to spend moments uh, in gratitude for the gifts and blessings of the day, then to ask for, for the light of God on the day to shine up those things of which we want to celebrate um, and those things that maybe we don't particularly want to celebrate, to take time to examine the day that we've experienced, to seek forgiveness for those moments that we need forgiveness and then resolve to change is part of the Jesuit um, lifestyle. But I, I see here that Jesus may not have gone through that particular model, but Jesus takes the time to come before God the Father to process the day. When Jesus walks on water, it's clear that it's a, revolution, uh, sorry, a revelation sorry, of God's power within him. As he, um, as he shares the, 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 um, the loaves and the fishes in the verses before, we see here the power of God at work in a different way, actually just to lift us, as we sang, um, when I was lost, you came and rescued me. Um, actually, the power of God to rescue us and to secure us. 
This is Matthew's second story of the kind of a boat at risk. We can read in chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. And that's the name that um, names Jesus' power in quietening the waves. You know, when the disciples were in the boat and Jesus is asleep and he's asking, so the disciples are asking, Lord, how can you sleep when the, this way, uh, boat has been tossed from side to side and the power of God within Jesus stills um, the waters? Here, in these verses we've read, Matthew asks us to attribute the way in which Jesus shares his power with Peter, proving that he is accessible to others. To each of us, Jesus places out his hands. And maybe when life is tossing us from side to side, or even we've got out the boat and we're like full of faith, but then actually kind of our humanness kind of creeps in a little bit and our doubt and our oh, not quite sure where this is going, and maybe we're getting wet feet. But actually, each of us have that privilege of calling out to Jesus. Peter holds, um, Peter's faith holds him for a while, as we read, but then collapses as fierce winds out. I don't know if, um, if any of you have ever done some high ropes or abseiling or that kind of stuff where you've got a harness around you. Um, Nathan was talking about it earlier. And seeing young people, or even adults, you know, it's not specific to age, um, 10 metres up on top of a pole, having to jump from one to the next, or whatever it may be, having to put their sole trust in this piece of rope that's maybe attached to some kind of gantry, um, yeah, they probably cling to a piece of wood because they feel that's the most safest, but actually, you're probably safer hanging on to gantry, but, you know, kind of the, the logic goes out the window at those points. And actually, as they eventually take the jump from one bit to the next, the sheer relief that they've landed with both feet on the platform um, and aren't dangling on the end of the rope, which is perfectly safe, but the logic sometimes in our mind doesn't always work like that. Or, if you've ever done abseiling, and this is the bit I hate about abseiling, when you get over the, the when you kind of get over the bar, um, but when you get over the, the bar, you then have to lean back for the rope to take its strain, for everything to tighten up. Um, that takes a bit of faith um, in A, the person holding the other end of the rope, um, and, and B, kind of that, yeah, it's all there. That it's, you know, it hasn't been used for the thousandth time, and yeah, it's starting to feel a bit weak. But yet, you know, we have to kind of put our faith in those um, apparatus that, and the people that are, are working. But as Christians, we have to put our faith in Jesus. How many of us, um, myself included, are, are kind of thinking about the what ifs. So when we step over the bar, when we lean back for the rope to take its tension, I'm thinking, well, is that guy down the bottom holding on tightly? Um, is the weight ratio okay? Or am I going to lean back and he's going to shoot up? Um, or... Um, yeah, when was the last time this lot was stress tested? Yeah. I don't know if anybody else's uh, brain kind of works that way. Um, or may, sometimes we just have to get out and do it, don't we? Not allow those um, ifs, buts, maybes, but those fears um, to come in. A little bit like that illustration when we put the um, washing up liquid into the bowl. Those fears just take the joy out, sink us to the bottom. The disciples were in the boat, it was in the early morning. It was quietness, you know, it, we're not just talking like um, the start of the working day, we're talking about early morning. That Peter heard Jesus calling him to get out of the boat and to walk to him on the water. Peter, having spent time with Jesus, so it's not somebody he didn't know, is filled with a, a mixture of both of faith and doubt. He is like all of us that we experience this pull and push factor Faith that drives us forward, but fear that sometimes just pulls us back. I wonder how many times we can, we've known that. Maybe we've been to summer camp or those kind of events, and we've come back full of faith and we can achieve anything, but how often doubt and the, the things of life soon kind of draw us back. And that kind of mountaintop experience that we experience, um, uh, of faith uh, we, we can achieve and actually our eyes are fixed on Jesus and we can do anything through the power of Jesus but yet we get back into our day-to-day -day life and doubts and worries come in 
John Ortberg says this about walking on water. Walking on water means facing our fears and choosing to not let our fears have the last, last word. Discovering and embracing our unique calling from God, being empowered to do what, what we do, not, sorry, being empowered to do what we do, but not in our own strength, but in Jesus' strength. Working out what is ours to do in life can often be a challenge. It is sometimes we call on God to help when we need to hear that quiet voice of guidance. Do we need that pure silence to help us grow in our faith? So often much of our worship services can be filled with music and laughter and, and times with um, much kind of sound, I was going to say noise, but I don't mean unwanted sound, um, but noise is that actually maybe don't always help us in our faith. Sometimes they do, and actually give us words and, and emotions that go beyond ourselves. But there are times where we need to spend our time in quietness. Beatrice Bonhoeffer says, that, um, says this, Why are we so afraid of silence? Why do we pray in silence? How do we recognise Jesus' Jesus's voice calling us? So often in today's world... We have so many kind of music apps available to us, whether it's on our phones or whether we've got earphones that we walk around in, you know, kind of thing. We can have uh, the whole vastness of music and podcasts to listen to wherever we find ourselves, and I'm sure many of us do. But actually, the importance of silence. If we've sl- um, slowed, have we slowed down enough to be still and to be silent, to listen? We believe that we can hear Jesus' voice. Well, at times we perhaps need to kind of take out the other distractions. How do we know if it's real? It's often a question, isn't it? How do I know if Jesus is talking to me? Well, it, maybe it leaves us experiencing, experiencing an increased hope, a love and faith. And we can be confident that it's truly his voice. We can test it out by talking with our other Christian friends. If the voice leaves us feeling a little confused, tied up in knots, um, our heart shrinking, then we can probably discern that it's not Jesus speaking. Again, we can use our trusted Christian friends to sound them out. Sometimes we don't need, to, sorry, we don't need to hear. So, sorry, sorry, again. Sometimes we don't so much hear the voice of God, but we sense this um, reassuring presence of God within us. That might just be enough for us as Jesus calls us to step out of the boat, to step out in faith. Maybe this morning we may be in that SOS point and actually our arms, our hands are reached out and we're asking Jesus to lift us up. Maybe God is calling us to be committed in silent prayer, to come before him, as we sang, in reverence and prayer, you know, to be still before him. Maybe we're being encouraged to get out of the boat and to walk on water, to have the faith that God, of what God is calling us to do. You know, Jesus has invited us into this full life in all its fullness. Well, um, to quote another um, book of John, uh, John Altberg's title is if you want to walk on water you need to get out of the boat if you want to have faith then you need to embrace it so just for the next few moments we're going to take some time this morning to be still and to be silent the next four or five minutes now for some of us we're going to love that for others we're going to hate it we're going to watch our, our, our uh, just because of the way that we're wired But Jesus is calling us to be still, maybe just to take a moment in the middle of today. Yeah, maybe for some of us, we've got lots to give thanks to God for in these next few moments. And for others, we feel like that maybe we're sinking and we need to reconnect with Jesus and we need to put out our hands. So as I say, for the next few moments, let's just be still and come before God in the stillness and the quietness. Um, If there's noise around from people, don't worry about that. 
um, let us come before God and um, yeah, just enjoy the stillness and hear God speak or just to reconnect or to give thanks or to lift up our, our challenges before him and to place out our hands and to put our hands into Jesus' hands. So let's just be still this morning. Father, we thank you for the times where we can just be still. Or maybe for some of us, those times are few and far between. And for others, they're a part of our daily routine, whether that's out of choice or just circumstance. But Father, we thank you that we can come before you. Thank you for the model of Jesus that, yeah, whatever um, Jesus was up to, he always made time to come to kneel, to pray, and um, to you. We also thank you for the example that Jesus is, and just a, we are called to fix our eyes on him, and to get out of the boat at times. And Lord, there are times where we do that boldly, and we, we're kind of striding it out across the water. Lord, but then there are times where fears and doubt come in, and maybe our feet are getting wet. Or maybe we're feeling as though we're sinking. But as we've been reminded this morning that you just ask us to call out to you and you put your hands out ready and waiting to receive us, to recalibrate us, to put our, our faith um, yeah, back in its right place, to dis, um, dispel the fear and the doubt of which sometimes just overcrowds our minds and our thinking. But we don't always look you face to face or to trust you implicitly. So Lord, in this week that we uh, enter into, well, may we make time to be still in whatever way that looks like, whether that's taking time to sit in the chair and be still and to turn everything off around us. Or we take a moment to walk um, in the park or in the streets of where we live. Just to be still. Lord, my prayer is that if any of us here this morning at that point of SOS, Lord, that we kind of call out to you and we put our, our hands in yours and you lift us up. Lord, have us, may we have um, eyes to see the, the faith opportunities, you know, what you're calling us to do, to commune with you and to discern what it is that you're requiring of us when, in, when we talk about getting out of the boat. And Lord, for each of us, that will be different. But also, Lord, I talk about that, I ask that also for collectively as a core in these days that we won't be frightened to get out of the boat in the things that you are calling us to do, calling us to be. Yeah, Lord, speak clearly and loudly. Help us to discern that, we pray. Thank you, then, Lord, that you are indeed our guide, our strength and our hope. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, finish by singing a song that says, In Christ alone our hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depth of peace, when fears and strive and struggles uh, something cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ that we stand. Let's stand. It's song 861. We'll sing these verses through. Thanks, Cliff. <laughs>
and a prayer of benediction. God, who calls us to step out in faith, to follow where he leads, even when he calls us to do what seems impossible. Let us go from here with courage, trusting in God's presence and power, and eager to do God's will. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and with us, with us wherever we find ourselves this week, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. God bless.